Well, we'll get there. I want to um, check with us first. This summer, we're going through the Bible, and we started, we divided it up. Uh, we're following this 30 Days to Understanding the Bible by Max Anders. So I've asked you to uh, remember. So the very first era of the Bible is the, is what? The era of creation. That happens in the book of what? Genesis. Genesis. The main dude of creation is Adam, and um, that takes place in the Garden of wonderful so now we've gone through 11 chapters now we're going to go to the next era and th what's that era called the era of the patriarchs it's getting a little bit better uh, what does patriarch mean father the first patriarch the guy who wore the stovetop hat abraham uh, and he has a, a son he and sarah have a son and they laugh because of it and the son's name is Isaac, and Isaac has a pair of twins. Esau comes out first, and the next son is Jacob. Jacob means trickster, and Jacob has a lot of kids, but he has 12 that we're going to keep track of. And he has a favorite. Who's his favorite? Joseph. So we're at the end of the book of Genesis. Um, and remember, I asked you to hold the page between Genesis and Exodus. How many years is there? 400 years. So now we are in the, the next era called the era of the Exodus. Who's the main dude of the Exodus? Moses. Remember, Moses receives the law from God. The How many commandments? Ten. Ten. How many? Ten. Good. Um, who would like to recite them? <laughs> All right, so we'll do a different sermon about that. All right. <clears throat> Ten. Now, remember, the, the folks reject the law for the most part, and they um, God says, All right. Oh. He says, I'm going to send you out into the wilderness for how many years? 40 years. So they wander around the wilderness. They finally end up on the east bank of the Jordan River. Remember, God says to Moses, you're not going over. I'm going to give, you a, I'm going to give the people a new leader. His name is? His name is? Joshua. Joshua means God saves. Joshua is the new leader. He is at the east bank of the Jordan River at flood stage. And so God stops up that river, remember, so the people can walk across. Then they have the first town they go to is Jericho. They march around the, the city for seven days. And then finally the walls come. Amen. Wonderful. And then, they, and then Joshua leads the people of Israel. And they lead from the Jordan River, which is on the, the east side of Israel. And they march all the way across to the west side, which is the Mediterranean Sea. And so literally the, the, the country gets divided and conquered. Now remember, there are how many tribes of Israel? Twelve. Good. Um, Joseph gets a double portion, so he, his sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, get each a piece of land. And there is a tribe of, of Israel that doesn't get any land whatsoever. Do you remember that tribe's name? The Levites. The Levites are the priests, and so God says to all the other tribes that your job is to make sure that the Levites are cared for. So their job is to take care of the Levite. All right? So now all that's been done, now the people of Israel have all been settled, and now, so we're moving from that. That was called the era of the conquest. The main dude is who? Joshua. And it takes place in the land of Canaan or Israel. So now everybody's got their land, all the tribes, all the families got their land, and they, um, they get along swimmingly, right? Nah. What happens is that God, they, they forget God's law, and they fall into sin. And at the very lowest, they figure out there's nothing else that we can do except to cry out for God. So they cry out for God, God sends them a judge. Remember, a judge is a person who has, who's a political leader. He's a military leader. And he is also, well, it's not just a he, because there are some female, there's a female judge as well. It's Deborah. Um, and they're also, uh, a, 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 they do, do like the supreme judge thing. So once that happens, things get better. Then they forget about God. And so we cycle over and over and over again. The best thing that I want you to remember is the very book, end of the book of Judges, where it says that, Everybody did what was right in their own sight. It doesn't happen anymore today, but it happened back then. So now, so here's Israel. And now they said, well, you know, one of the things, one of the reasons that we're doing so poorly, God, is we need a king. And God says, oh, they're not going to be happy if they get a king. And Samuel, who's a prophet, says, well, that's what they're asking for. And 
God says, well, no, they're really saying that I'm not king enough in their life. But I'll send them a king, just remind them that a king will tax them, a king will conscript them into the military service, and a king will want whatever the king wants. They still say, no, everybody else has got a king, we want a king. So the very first king of Israel is who? Saul. And Saul does a poor job, and so God calls, um, calls an unlikely king the next time. He appoints who as the next king of Israel? David. And David... If you read about David, you'll find that he is the apple of God's eye. And if you were a, a God-fearing Jew, um, you would put Moses and David on, on pretty much the same kind of level. You go, oh, we really love Moses and we really love David. David has a, bunch of, has a number of sons, but he has a favorite and he puts him on the throne. His name is who? King? Solomon, the wise one, remember Solomon builds the temple. And then after Solomon dies, he has, he has a bunch of kids as well, but they all want the throne, and so we're thrown into the civil war, and we have a divided kingdom. The northern part, there's ten tribes up there in the southern part. So that's where we ended. So that's the era of the kingdom, and the, um, the, the person that we know the most about in the era of the kingdom is who? King? King David. And that takes place in the land of... Pretty much this is easy. Everything is pretty much going to take place in the land of Israel for the rest of the Old Testament, okay? Except for this era that we're coming to today. Now, the prophets during the kingdom era have come and they've said to the kings, they said, listen, you need to follow what God is telling you to do because if you don't shape up, God is going to ship you out. The ten on the north, they're the first to go. We call them the lost tribes of Israel. The, the two in the south, which would be Judah and Benjamin, and that's also where Jerusalem is at. There's a few better kings in that mix, but they also do not do what God asked them to do. And so they are going to get shipped out. Now, where are they going to be shipped? Now, I have to tell you that because that's, now we are at the time of the exile. So we just left the time of the monarchy, the kingdom era, and the favorite king is David, and that takes place in Israel. And now we are at the time of the exile. God is going to say, well, you didn't listen. You didn't shape up. And so now you're going to be shipped out. Now, I didn't know about the era of the exile until I went to seminary. I knew about Moses. I had heard a lot about Adam and Eve. I had heard the story about Noah, and I heard the story about Joseph, and I heard about um, Samson, Eber, and, and, and David, I'd heard about that, and Solomon, I'd heard, but this exile thing, I was going, what is this exile thing? I've never heard of exile. Well, this is what's going on here. This psalm is written by those who were exiled, and this is what happens. The Assyrians, which is a kingdom to the north of, of Israel, they come down and they want to expand their country. Now, Israel is really small. Assyria is much bigger. They come down and they take over Israel. But little be known to the Assyrians that over there to the east of them is the Babylonians. And the Babylonians also want to expand their country. And so they're marching westward and they take over the Assyrians. Now, Israel's in the midst, and they're going, well, we didn't ask for any of this. We just want to stay here. The Babylonians decide that this is better, this is a better strategy with anybody that we take. What we're going to do is we're going to deport them. We're going to take them from their country that they know, and we are going to move them to a country where they don't know, so they won't have as much power when they get together in their little parking lot groups. So first what they do is they start to take the youngest. They take those who um, they would say, oh, you know, you're kind of a, you're an aspiring mathematician. We can, we can take, we're going to take you from your family and we're going to bring you over to, to uh, the University of Babylon and we're going to teach you to work in the University of Babylon. So we, they took the, some of the young people first. So there's different kinds of deportations out of Israel over into Babylon. Now, Babylon is between the, the Tigris and Euphrates River. And this is where this hymn is written, Psalm 137. 
by the Babylonian rivers. We sat down in grief and we wept. We hung our harps on the willows. And our tormentors, those who captured us, they demanded that we would sing joyfully the songs of Zion. You have been taken from your home. And you are told, demanded, that you are going to leave and you take, make this 600-mile journey. And you are told, not only are you going to leave, that when you get there, we want you to sing. And we want you to sing with such a way that you are happy about it. I want us to get a sense of the exile. So I am going to demand that you are going to move. You are going to pick up your belongings and you are going to move. And you aren't going to stay in the same section. This section, wherever you are, you can't stay in this section anymore. You have to move to a different section. This section, you can't stay where you are anymore. You have to move to a different section. This section over here, you can't stay where you are anymore. You have to move. This section, and, and those in the back, you got to come to the front. <laughs> and while you're doing this, I want you to be happy. You may move. Take your belongings. You are not coming back. Yes, you can. <laughs> but kings can put you in jail. <laughs> now, I noticed that when we moved that many of you stayed together in your families, right? Yeah. When they moved into exile, the chances of that happening were not as good that some of them, there were three different deportations out of Israel. And they would take, they took the youngest first, and then they just kept taking and moving. And what happened once they were over in Babylon, there was another country called Persia, and the Persians moved in, and they took over Babylon. And the people of Israel are thinking about home. Last night, uh, was it last night? Sandy and I watched a movie called The Book Thief. Any watched The Book Thief before? It's, a, it's, one, it's a, a, a movie that's set in World War II. But it doesn't make any difference which movie you've seen, if you've seen uh, Schindler's List or you've seen The Holocaust or anything else. I want you to get a sense, if you've seen that kind of movie before, of watching the Jews being um, told that you are going to leave from your place, and they're not told where they're going to go. And they're trying to tote along whatever they can in their hands of their belongings because they've got to leave their home. And, the, and in this case, the Germans were perfectly fine with that because they knew that what they were bringing were probably the most expensive things they had, so it was just a lot easier for them to confiscate it. And they don't know where they're going to go. And as they're walking... Or being bolted into trains, remember, some, say, some of them say, you, you separate. 
you're not going to be with them anymore. That's the exile. And there they are by these canals in Babylon. And those who have told them that they had to move out are now, so, now also saying, we want to hear some songs from you. We want to hear your old songs that you used to sing back when you were home. And it wasn't because they wanted to really hear and be joyfully exuberant because they're hearing somebody else sing. Here's one of the songs. We want you to sing, God is our refuge and strength an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though through its waters roar, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, the Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. They had just come from seeing Solomon's temple. And these tormentors are saying, we want you to remember who took over. Why don't you sing to us about how great your God is now that you're here in Babylon. And by the way, we want to tell you about a telegraph. That temple that you love so much, it's crumbled. Sing your song. As I saw you move I saw some of you shepherding your kids, trying to keep them all together. I saw some of you trying to help those who are going, what are we doing? <laughs> Dad, it's okay. What? what, what? Just move. <laughs> That's the exile. Now, if you continue to read about the exile, there were, there's a couple of books that were written during the exile that, that I didn't know was written about the exile. One of them is called the Book of Daniel. Anyone heard of Daniel before? Daniel and the, and the lion's den, right? Daniel is one who gets deported early from, from um, Israel. So probably when he's a teenager. And if you want to read of any human... In all of Scripture, I think if you read the book of Daniel, you'll find this man who, despite everything, he's ripped away from his parents, he's ripped away from his family, he's ripped away from his homeland, and he's encountering how many different, I mean, he's got, he's been taken over by the Assyrians, he's been taken over by the Babylonians, he's been taken over by the Persians, and yet in Daniel, you'll find that Daniel says, I will worship God my God. Remember the first time he's told, well, if you don't worship our king, we're going th to throw you into the fiery furnace. And what happens to Daniel? He comes out saying, it's like air conditioning down there. Gets thrown into the lion's den. And, ever, and, and that was common practice. They want to make an example out of him. And Daniel comes out and says, it's a nice kitty. <laughs> he doesn't do it with boastfulness, though. He knows who, sa who saves him. It's God. The other one that I want you to read sometime is called the book of Ezekiel. Um, now, some of you already know a bit about the b b book of Ezekiel, if you don't know all of it. But remember the dry bones that are in the desert? And, um, and those bones, those bones are going to rise again, okay? So that's, they, and they all get assembled. Well, then I want you to read about this chariot. This chariot has all kinds of wheels. And on the wheels, there are all kinds of eyes that are, that are on each of the wheels, and the chariot can move anywhere. It doesn't have to, it doesn't even beep when it backs up. It can, it can move any place. It's completely mobile. 
Now, when you're reading that, you're going, this is really weird stuff. But for the people of Israel, well, first of all, it's prophetic language or um, apocalyptic language. So they understood a bit about that. They knew that it was, they knew that it was probably more metaphorical than actual wheels that had eyes on them. But here's what God was saying. I know you're over there in Babylon. And I know that you believe that the only place that I have been is in the temple. And I know that you are no longer in the, in the, in the place, that county, that, that, that country that your ancestors had. You no longer do the, do the Reubenites have their place. No longer does the clan of Judah have Jerusalem. But when you see those eyes, I want you to know that I see where you are. I always know where you are. I'm not just back there in Israel. I am here with you. And when you move, and you move in any direction whatsoever, I am with you always. There is no place that you can move that God cannot move along with you. There is no place that you can be that God doesn't see exactly where you are. And even though you're out there in Babylon, God is with you. Now some of us have never moved and you've stayed in the same place all your life. But I can tell you what, I can almost guess that there have been times that in, even though you've never moved physically, that there are times that in your life you're going, man, I feel so displaced. I don't feel like I'm in the same place anymore. I don't know if I know all these people anymore. I don't know what's going on within me, but I feel so alone. I wish I were home. And to that, my friends, hear this word. God is with you. God is with you. 